Welcome to the Fast Mode podcast series. I'm Tara Neal and with me today is Marcin Dryanski, CEO and Principal Consultant at Remedo Labs. Remedo Labs specializes in high quality consulting, implementation and R&D services in the field of modern wireless systems, currently focusing on 5G and Open RAN. The company is an Open RAN software provider delivering customized X apps and R apps for RAN intelligent controllers. Remedo Labs is a spin-off of the Poznan University of Technology, Poland, from the Institute of Radio Communications, and is a member of the Open Networking Foundation, ONF, and ORAN Alliance. Marcin has over 15 years of experience, having served as an R&D engineer and consultant, technical trainer, technical leader, advisor, and board member. Marcin has been involved in 5G design since 2012, where he was a work package leader in the FP7 5G Now project. He is a co-author of many articles on 5G and LTE Advanced Pro and a co-author of the book From LTE to LTE Advanced Pro and 5G. Marcin joins us today as part of our exclusive editorial segment on OpenRAN. Welcome Marcin, great to have you on the show. Um, hello, and thanks for having me here. Okay, great. Our first question for today is, uh, can you explain the role of RAN intelligent controllers, uh, otherwise known as RICs, for open RAN? How do RICs power a multi-vendor disaggregated architecture for RAN? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, actually. So um, RAN intelligent controllers, or RICs, uh, I would say are foundational to the open RAN architecture, because uh, in the sense they enable multi-vendor and disaggregated deployments. Uh, in our, and by our, I mean uh, Remedo Labs view, and my, my personal view, RIG plays an essential role as it enables implementation of dedicated algorithms by external or otherwise known as third party uh, companies like Remedo by means for uh, of X apps for the near real-time RIG and uh, R apps for non-real-time RIG. Um, and those algorithms aim at optimization of the run uh, operation and enhancements of its capabilities. So there are two parts to this. Um, and there's some companies specialize in general areas uh, that everybody is using, like energy saving, quality of service optimization or slicing, while others can work directly with an operator to create a dedicated and tailored uh, apps um, related to the requirements that are needed. Uh, and specifically, mm, there has been an NTA RIG forum early this year where examples of those were energy saving and traffic steering use cases. Uh, and many companies basically developed uh, specific solutions for those use cases. That, that was sort of part of this tailored or dedicated apps. Um, on the other end, RIG also leveraged standardized interfaces such as E2 and A1 to ensure interoperability across vendors, which is critical for this aggregated ecosystem. So not only provides access and enables um, uh, providing external algorithms to control the run, but also enables to have a sort of an enabling uh, platform to uh, disaggregate um, on the soft bond, uh, the different um, vendors from the, from the run side. Uh, however, a significant challenge at this stage lies in coordinating diverse applications and mitigate conflicts that is subject to current uh, works and the standardization and research. Um, and those should be sort of addressed through fr uh, frameworks, ML-based policy resolution or operational guidelines that are currently being worked on. Great. Um, building on that, and I think you touched a little bit on this, how have the latest X apps and R apps enhanced the capabilities uh, of the RIG? Can you like share some of the latest use cases for these apps? Yeah, sure. So I, actually, I would turn uh, the question around because uh, I would say that the, the, the heart and, and the key are the, the apps, right? Um, so they naturally enhance the capabilities of the RIG. So the XAPs and RAPs provide solutions for specific problems, while RIG serves as a platform to enable those, uh, being sort of an operating system for the run. Of course, this analogy might be too short, as RIG is not only providing the framework, but it also facilitates interoperability and data exchange, 
um, within uh, using those uh, those apps. So currently, um, answering to the second part of your question, currently the most important use cases um, from the agendas of both the operators and the standardization is related to security, energy efficiency, massive MIMO, uh, as well as more traditional ones like traffic steering, uh, run or quality of service optimization and the like. Um, on the third part, um, Emerging trends uh, like towards 6G, including AI driven predictive maintenance applications, but also the recently worked on um, functionalities like NTN or non terrestrial networks uh, from FreeGPP came into play there as well. Interesting. Um, so, Marcin, uh, as an active member of the ORAN Alliance and the Open Networking Foundation, can you share some of the collaborative efforts underway in the Open RAN space? How do standard bodies influence the adoption of Open RAN? Thanks, thanks for the question. And yeah, uh, so um, one of the key features, uh, w w which I already mentioned, that is important uh, on our end, of course. Uh, the currently subject to standardization, but also on the research community is conflict mitigation that is needed uh, if there is more than one app within the rig, which actually makes most of the sense, right? So um, this is true for both near real-time rig and non-real-time rig, although there are different uh, sort of variations and flavors of those because the near real-time rig, in the near real-time rig, we actually control the run functionality. In the non-real-time rig, we provide policies. So those functionalities um, in, in the sense of conflict mitigation would be different. Um, although the work started there in that space some time ago there is still a, a road to go to make those solutions more mature in this respect so recently in the in the recent set of specifications that came out to the public domain from Oran Alliance there is the first version of the conflict mitigation um, uh, technical report another aspect is the common rig apis which are required to make it possible for the apps to be portable between rigs so to date, when we work with different rig vendors, each time we, we develop an app, we need to sort of um, redesign it a little bit and then to adapt to a specific rig platform. So that would be of use to have a common APIs. In this context uh, of rigs, it's also worth noting the further, uh, further refinement and clarifications in the design of the architectures themselves for the near real-time rig and non-real-time rig. And examples here are um, like, concepts like decoupled SMO, run analytics exposure, or intent-driven management. Uh, more general topics um, and sort of cross-domain or cross-element are security and energy efficiency that are still high on the agendas of the corresponding working and focus groups. Um, yet another activity that I would mention that directly influences the adoption of Open Run is the TIFG or a test and integration focus group that work on end-to-end -end testing as well as integration, badging and certification. So in this context, uh, bringing how the standard influence the adoption of Open RAN, this is directly where it, where it happens. So the maturity of those would uh, enable the true interoperability for multi-vendor solutions. And finally, there is also a future looking effort namely the uh, NGRG or Next Generation Research Group within Oran Alliance that targets vision for 6G and how Oran fits there. And that is also important for Oran concepts to make it to the next G instead of being glued to the existing standard as it happened within a 5G timeframe. Mm -hmm. So the, that's, that's insightful. Um, how have Remedo Labs origins and uh, also, your own academic involvement with the Poznan University of Technology shaped um, Remedo Lab's approach towards R&D and innovation in Open RAN. Um, also, what are some of the key research areas within Open RAN that are being explored today? Thank, thanks for the question. And actually, it, it makes or start to make me wonder uh, on this topic uh, on myself when when uh, when I heard it. So I believe the most important factor for Remedial Labs to take its shape uh, towards R&D within specifically Open Run is ours as founders and team background. So we have a handful skilled, um, of skilled R&D engineers and experts uh, that are longly being engaged in the radio algorithms design. 
Uh, and many of them are PhDs and postdocs at the Poznan University of Technology or POT, uh, which basically um, uh, sort of shaped the, the, the overall strategy and uh, the way we do things in Remedo. So the gathered experience in national and international research project involving simulations, algorithm design and the, and the field structured our way of thinking. So some of, of our people were engaged in the design of SON algorithms at 2010 and, and, and afterwards. Others work in the low MAC or physical layer resource optimization. We also got people experience in V2X communication or security. So in this context, Oran uh, serves as an enabler and natural enabler in transferring those ideas and algorithms to the ecosystem uh, packaged as XAPs and Arab. So I would say that's a natural sort of a combination of what we know and, and can do with what is enabled by Oran. And it is also worth noting that we are highly, we highly value the direct collaboration with the, uh, with the university, the PUT, in joint research projects. An example here is 5G Star targeting the security solutions for 5G. Now getting to the second point, of your question, the key research areas that we are currently uh, targeting um, reflect uh, the combination of four different things. One is our background and expertise, so what we can do and, and, and uh, what we uh, know. The second is what are the operators or customers' voices. The third one is Oran standardization activities. So where the standardization is going, what are the items that are being worked on? And fourth is the research, uh, recent recent trends. So combining all those, uh, we are sort of extracting what we know to what is needed. This is the way we, we shape uh, the things we do. In particular, we are currently pursuing uh, security, energy efficiency, end-to-end -end testing, massive MIMO, traffic steering, and conflict mitigation. So partly everything that I already mentioned before. And it's also worth mentioning that we are going to participate in the recently announced EU-funded SNS uh, project, a collaborative project uh, called Unity 6G that targets the creation of uh, sustainable, scalable AI native architecture um, for 6G networks. So also targeting uh, the, re the research areas um, as we have two different uh, versions of the things we do. One is um, research towards the future and the second one is actually responding to the customer's needs uh, at this stage. Brilliant. That's an impressive portfolio and uh, we expect to see lots of developments uh, in these areas um, in the near future. Um, shifting the focus, how does Remedo Labs approach end-to-end -end testing for Open RAN? Why is this a critical area in Open RAN implementations? Uh, that's a good question and a very important topic from our perspective at this stage. I think the key point here is to and be able to compare various solutions in a common framework, common procedures, and common test environment, right? Otherwise, everybody is, is working on its solution, saying that he has the best um, uh, the best approach to to certain topic like energy efficiency, uh, but without the common ground, it's difficult to prove which is better than the other one. So. Um, you might ask also uh, beyond that, why end-to-end -end is critical? Uh, to ensure multi-vendor interoperability, reducing deployment risks and validating open run promises of flexibility, cost efficiency. I think that should be more than enough to, to make uh, the need for energy end-to-end -end testing uh, viable. Uh, and to this end, we are currently cooperating with i14 YLab in developing such framework in the context of energy efficiency. Uh, and, and that's one part of the, I would say, question. The other one, what is what end-to-end -end approach is in itself? Because this is not a trivial thing to define. And we learned this uh, while sort of working with i14 while up currently. So um, one can imagine several end-to-end -end versions. I, I think that it might um, sound weird, but th this is the way we see it at this stage. So the first one would be to have a full stack with all elements. Uh, the real UE, the real ORU, ODU, OCU, RIG, uh, core network application and apps. Um, in this case, we can call this end-to-end -end because we have all elements. We can, run, uh, we can run an application and check its performance. 
so in this case, we can test functionality of each component, but not the performance of the app, which typically takes uh, its its preference. It takes its. Uh, we can see its operation where there is a bigger environment. So on the other end, when we would like to uh, have tested X app and R app specifically uh, performance and scale, we need a big environment that is not feasible in the, where we have the real devices and the real network, <clears throat> sorry, at, at this uh, first approach. Thus, uh, we use emulation or simulation. Uh, however, to get closer to reality, those results of the first approach um, could be used as a model to the second one. So for example, we could test the different energy levels uh, for various um, traffic uh, loads and the first type of approach where we have the real stack, and then use this as a model to the second one to reflect it in the simulation environment. And there is, of course, um, the another approach, an end-to-end -end version we can imagine, for example, uh, having a cloud environment. Uh, we could have the same setup with different deployments using, for example, a sin sin single server for a whole stack, right? It would work in one way, but if we distribute them into different POPs, uh, so points of presence and, and the cloud run um, <clears throat> and uh, edge, um, uh, the cloud and edge um, locations, uh, sort of going towards the more realistic uh, distribution or deployment, uh, the solutions might have different results, right? So there are at least three different versions of the end-to-end -end, um, testing, right? So in this context, as there are many various angles, which are I, I have just brought to such uh, testing, the collaboration between different parties is significantly important. Bringing knowledge from testing, app design, run expertise, integrators, and cloud aspects into this activity. So it's it's in our um, perspective, it's not possible to have a, a, a single uh, sort of a company uh, developing such a framework, but it needs a collaboration as Oran is, is all about this, I would say. Amazing. Well, I guess, um, you know, uh, that wraps up um, all our questions um, and also our session for today. Uh, thank you, uh, Marcin, for joining us and for sharing your insights, um, specifically on the role of the RIC advancements in the X apps and R apps and the innovations shaping the future of Open RAN. Thank you, and thanks, uh, thanks again for, for having me here. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you to everyone tuning in. If you guys want to learn more, please visit remedolabs.com and follow us for more updates and insights as we continue to uncover the latest in technology and telecommunications. See you in our next session.